Okay, welcome to today's video. Today's video is on chapter 4 for Sec 1 Geography. Right, in this part of the video, we will be looking at uh, the components of how water can be managed sustainably in Singapore and also at some other countries as examples. We'll also be evaluating some of the strategies taken to sustainably manage water resources. Um, this is a part 1 of a two-part video because this video is uh, quite a lot of content to cover. So, let's start. Now when we're looking at water quality, right, some of these key things that we need to remember is water is everywhere and it's in all of us. And you cannot separate yourself from it. So it is a very silly thing if we don't take care of this very fundamental resource that we all really, really need to survive. Okay, everything around us needs water to survive, including ourselves. So it's a very limited resource, right? Um, if we don't try to manage this sustainably and effectively, uh, we will not be able to continue to reap the benefits out of this. Uh, okay, and with the two very big problems that are facing uh, humanity now, the ever increasing world population numbers, we are almost eight, at 8 billion already. Okay, that's very, very scary a number. Okay, and also global warming, which is real, right? Which is very, very real. Uh, these two things together are uh, applying a very strong uh, pressure onto our idea of how we can manage water okay some of these strategies uh, both long and short term need to work together for us to ensure continued uh, availability of water okay so for this right we will be looking at these four areas how countries improve water how countries reduce consumption how tech can come in right what kind of tech have we been looking at and coming together to Take a look at whether Singapore is the only country who are, who is using tech like this, okay? And also, what is the other way? Which is is there options to import water from other locations, maybe within the country if you have a very large country, or to buy water from someone else? So we will only cover in the in the first part of the video for this for this video part one, uh, improving water quality and possibly reducing water consumption. So, how can what are the common ways that we uh, can look at in terms of how you can improve water quality? Okay, we bring ourselves back a little bit to our IC task, the GI component, where you need to be able to describe water quality. How do you tell someone that oh yeah, this water is good, right? It's clean. Am I supposed to just take your word for it? Okay, uh, like every educated person, you shouldn't just take the word for of somebody anybody's word for for it so you need to be very clear what exactly we are talking about when we say good water quality right so when we look at our gi process what were some of the things that we use uh indicators some of these tests that we did to to benchmark what exactly good water or clean water actually is we look at things like dissolved oxygen we look at things like ph level we look at things like uh, turbidity right um so these are all good indicators they can use when you are trying to describe uh, water quality okay what is the most common thing used to maintain or to improve water quality as a country it will be laws right imposing a certain law like no littering no bring or no pouring of toxic chemicals into the water bodies if whether you are an individual or company or a factory no no dumping of waste directly okay so think about it are you allowed to bring your waste paper basket in class okay to Alexandria canal and dump it in straight away you can't right you can uh, that there's there is actually no nothing no physical barrier stopping you from doing that but why don't we do it because we all know that there's something to pay uh, right the fine could be, is quite severe if you are caught openly dumping this okay now that with that statement i bring in another point you if you are caught okay if you are caught now in singapore in many many developed countries uh, it is not difficult to catch someone in the act you don't need a human being to be there all the time using modern technology you're able to enforce these rules okay so this is important right moving on if you're looking at water quality right if you have very good clean water then it can be taken to be direct consumption right if you have 
uh, super clean water. Some industries in some some sectors, like when they're making silicon chips, okay, they do need super clean water. So the level of clean, how clean the water is, dictates what are the users, right? So if you have very very good ability to produce very clean water, then you can have certain industries appear in your country. Right. So, what are the advantages of using laws? Right. Advantages is you is a win win for the government, lah, Right. You get better water. You get uh, fines which churn in collectible money. Taxi is think of it as a form of money for the government. Right. Of course, these advantages exist. Uh, in if in enforcement, are you able to enforce? If your country is very large, if your people are very poor, right? Are you able to give them an alternative to dumping? Okay, so it's very important to also remember that we try to think that humans try to do the good stuff, do the right thing. Okay, although yeah, I agree that it's not always true, but you know, inherently we try to think that humans will want to do the right thing. However, sometimes it's a case of there really isn't a choice. Okay, so let's put it this way: if you now are in the canteen, you have bought some some gyoza, okay, from whichever store it is, or you bought a uh, you you bought. You bought a piece of fruit. It comes in a in a plastic bag, right? When you're done with the fruit, what do you do with the plastic bag? If you are in the school canteen, there are dustbins, there are trash bins all around the canteen. You can dump it there. What if I remove the, the dustbins and trash bins? Where would you dump that piece of trash? Now, some of you may be saying, "Oh, I bring back to class. We have a trash bin in class. We have trash bins uh, around the school as well. What if I remove all of those? What are you going to do with a piece of trash?" For some of you, you may be thinking, oh, then oh, it's really inconvenient, but maybe I bring it out. I keep it with me. After school, as I walk to the bus stop, there is normally a trash bin at the bus stop. Okay, so I would like to remind you that's true in Singapore. That's not always true elsewhere. So what if those bins are also removed? Where will you throw that plastic bag? Think about it for a minute. How many of you would Think of bringing it home to throw, right? While I would like to think that all of you will eventually come to that rational conclusion, I also know that that is a ridiculously inconvenient thing for you to be bringing home. It is a food wrapper that used to contain fruits. It would be possible that you have some remnants inside. If you were to bring this home, it is also possible that you have to put it in your bag and that it contaminates something due to compression, due to spillage, due to whatever reasons you have and you may dirty your bag as a result. So with that in mind, would you actually bring it home? Okay, so many a times enforcing a law or uh, imposing a law has a sister side to it, has a mirror to it, okay? While you want to enforce this, you need to provide the ability for the people to follow the law. You need to provide um, functionalities and, and uh, uh, accessories or or things amenities that can help people who want to follow the rule want to not commit uh, a crime follow the law okay so if you are thinking about having a law like this is it fair to the people if you do not provide the services for them to do the right thing so some of these signs are, are common that if you go to water-based areas so i believe because you guys do the morning run around alexander canal park you would have seen some of these signs around okay you may not have looked at the signs carefully to note what is uh, written on the sign but there are warning signs all around the canal park so the next time when you go uh, on your own okay not during fit run please and you see sign and signs signages, maybe go nearer and see whether you can spot these four general symbols and what they are. Okay. So who runs the protection agency in of water bodies in Singapore? It will be the NEA, National Environment Agency. Okay. So NEA in Singapore, right, uh, they they are in charge of all the water bodies. Okay, and they will be the ones who draft, put into law, and enforce. Now, what are the water bodies in Singapore that are protected? Hmm. All the water bodies in Singapore are protected. From your canals, 
to your reservoirs to even the coastal regions okay so we have very strict laws uh, that dictate what can be released into the water itself directly what cannot what is approved what will be fine okay in singapore all our water bodies are strictly uh, controlled if you think about it very carefully the fact that we have struggled with water as a resource all all these years as a country is not surprising to hear this is this true in all countries unfortunately no right so if you see this take a look at the image here um china right has always struggled with uh pollution of the water sources it's not because they have agriculture huh? there are countries with agriculture that have less of a struggle but it's largely due to the lack of an alternative right so think back to the fruit wrapper case study i told you earlier on okay uh, there is no clear alternative for many of the uh, industries and many of the people in china uh, in terms of not polluting the water in terms of where to dump their their wastewater safely in terms of how to treat the wastewater there's no water treatment there is no alternative site so even though they have regulations they also have some laws against some of these things it cannot be enforced very strictly right okay water consumption will increase once your economy grows and your population grows okay economy when the economy grows it generally means that you have more businesses you may have more factories you may have more companies and as a result the need for water in those areas will grow let's bring you back to the previous part of this chapter where we look at industrial water pollution okay so when you have more and more uh, economic growth you will have more industries and as a result you will definitely have more water needs similarly domestic use right individual use with more people there will be more needs okay so this is very important uh, water actually needs to be treated and clean okay although we are closed loop and it is a renewable resource it can run out if you take more than you can replenish okay so water is a finite quantum on earth if we continue to produce more and more humans you may run low in terms of a global situation okay the other problem is of course climate change when you are looking at climate change playing a role um it's still a closed loop huh? so let, let's get this very clear first in terms of when you're looking at water itself it's a closed loop so the total amount of water that is available on planet earth will be the same however the more humans you have the more water is locked away in their bodies the more uh, the climate changes the more water is locked away in non-surface water stores so if you have more water in the atmosphere we have more water that's trapped away in terms of groundwater we have more water that is surface water but is polluted the total amount of water that's left for consumption will be greatly reduced so keep this in mind this is very very important right who has a role to play in controlling water consumption everybody from you to the authorities to the agriculture sector and to the industrial sector okay so everybody needs to come together to play the, the part in controlling water consumption right so the, the next thing then would be naturally to, to segue onwards to how countries can reduce water consumption okay so if you're looking at once again countries right what's the most natural thing that we can do when you're looking at countries there's regulation ah. okay so authorities can always come in and uh, regulate you can raise public awareness right you can encourage people to install water saving devices so to bring you back to the earlier part of this chapter where i showed you a video on what you can apply from from nea right the water saving uh, set the, the waterproof bag uh, or that you can put in your toilet bowl system the tap regulator they can put into your tap so that the flow of water is a bit slower right so these are all the things that the authorities can do in terms of the industries right uh, as a responsible industry player monitoring your equipment right no leaks these are very very small things very very important okay think about the hotel industry uh, the last time you went to a hotel right did you reuse the towels if you stay for a couple of days or do you 
ask for a change of towels every day right now this is a very common thing nowadays in hotels um, some skeptics will say they're trying to cut costs but I would like to think that um, if you think of it positively even if they are cutting costs it is still doing good for the environment okay do you really need to change the towel every day right when do you use the towel you use it before you shower or you use it after you shower so technically after you shower you should be a clean person huh? right technically you should be a clean person after you shower so think about it you are using it just to wipe off the the water the remnants of the water which is by the time you're wiping it down you should be clean covered in clean water already so it doesn't really hurt for you to reuse the towel one more day at the very least okay if not two days so when you don't constantly ask for a change of fresh towels, you don't constantly have to wash all the towels in the hotel and there's massive savings in terms of water. Right? Now, actually, if you are looking at water consumption, awareness is key. Okay? So most of the time, um, people will take the better choice if they're aware of a better choice. Okay? How to entice them more save money if the better choice leads to monetary savings then greater chance right because not only do you feel good about your choice you know your pocket feels good too so money talks right so one of the biggest advantages of uh, reducing water consumption is really okay both the social and financial okay emotional well-being goes up because you know you have done good for the environment uh, financial well-being goes up because you know you have saved some money are there disadvantages right it takes time right there's a lead time required for all parties to react especially if you go up the into larger groupings like your companies or worse still when you talk about governments these are all larger problems right they all take time okay so this is very very important Okay, the second thing is of course cost it's expensive so not all governments are able to do this not all individuals are able to make uh, the better water choice okay so this is very important as well we're looking at this okay how do countries reduce water consumption what does singapore do okay the well scheme um, where we have water efficiency ratings for products that use water so what exactly is one of these products let's write this down washing machines okay and actually increasingly there's another product that many uh, i realize that many students have at home nowadays that has the water efficiency rating as well it's a dishwasher okay i know most of us are asians and if you watch american comedy Agents don't use washing machine or don't use uh, dishwashers. That's actually not true. Huh? Increasingly, we have more and more uh, exposure to this tool. Okay, right. Uh, in terms of how Singapore does it, we have campaigns. Right, we have initiatives. Okay, if you're able to uh, reduce. Okay, uh, we also have taxation in terms of water tax. Uh, the water consumption at home right actually comes in different brackets the first block of water that's used by your, your house in the month your charge at this rate if you exceed that block your charge a higher rate per unit of water this will discourage people from using too much water unnecessarily okay so this has quite worked quite well in singapore are we the only country doing this uh attempting to reduce water consumption no right so if you look at the other case study in your textbook will be south africa okay uh, south africa experiences periods of dry climate regularly okay and there are times where it's very severe with climate change it has gotten more severe you have a situation of droughts okay so when you have this and you have tourist destinations you're gonna have a dichotomy where you need to decide what you want to do right so what are some of these things that they have uh, implemented okay awareness campaigns Right for the tourists, like so. What we what we what did we what we did we talk about earlier? The very simple thing of the towels in, in your hotels, right? Giving awareness to the tourists that they can do their part in conserving. Of course, there are other ways like harvesting your, uh, aircon water units. Okay, the water that comes out, you don't drink it. Right? It's distilled water. You shouldn't drink it, but you can use it for a myriad of other things like flushing the toilet bowls, washing the floors, 
etc. Okay, so South Africa is another country that has does this. Right. So this is an example of an awareness poster, okay, showing people um what the consumption is like if you take a 10 minute shower versus a five minute shower. Okay, if you keep the tap running or you brush your teeth for two minutes only versus you use a mug. Okay, so these are some of these ideas that uh, you can talk about if you're talking about how countries look at reducing water consumption. Okay, so I will stop here for this video. Right, take some time, think about what are some of these uh, things that you may have seen in your real life. Okay, as you wander around the wonderful country of Singapore. What are some water posters you have seen? Have you seen advertisements on water saving? On not wasting water? Okay. Uh, if not, why? We obviously know that we still have a water problem. And water is still a very precious resource in Singapore. Right? Has it become less precious because of some of the implementations of new strategies that we have? Right? Think of the learning journey that you went on to the new water plant. Okay. What did we see at the new water plant? How do we deal with the... How do we harness the power of new water to supplement our water's resources? Right? Uh, I would have said this in class many, many times. 20% of what you drink in tap water is new water. Right? So, it can be cranked up if there's a need. Uh, is that the reason why we don't see so many water-saving advertisements anymore? So with that, I will stop the video here. Uh, come back for part two, where we deal with technology, how tech is used in by many countries to save water.